Hi, my name is Lavanda Petit. I'm a project manager and I help people plan and prepare for things in their life. Today, we're going to talk about emergency and disaster planning. Now, depending on where you live, disaster could mean different things. Here, in the Houston metropolitan area, we have things like hurricanes, flooding, and the occasional tornado. Now, relative to where you live, you may have some of the same, or some of your emergencies might include earthquakes, landslides, snowstorms, gamma ray bursts. Mm, okay, maybe not that last one, but you get the idea. Now, I know what you're saying. You're like, hey, I got my emergency plan down. I got my stuff. I got my list together. And, you know, <clears throat> you might be right. You might know about the three to five gallons of water per person. You might know about three to five days of food, including baby food, baby formula, and pet food, if all of that's applicable to you, because you can't forget that. You probably know about the batteries, the flashlights, the candles, and the first aid. And some of you have even gone so far as to remember the medicine, the sleeping bags, the extra blankets, the plywood for the windows, the tape and insulation for the pipes, charcoal and lighter fluid, and even a propane tank, just in case you have to cook outside for a few days or stay warm outside. And, to top it all off, some of you have already got an emergency stuff in the car. Flares and things in case you have to travel. Car chargers for the cell phones, all of that. If you've got that done, great job. Kudos on your preparedness. This video today takes into account or assumes that you've already got the basis covered. You've already got this list and you're well on your way. What we'll do today is we'll go to some just-in-case reminders, some questions that we'll add, we'll ask ourselves, and we might just add something to your list. To that end, grab your list and let's get started. So, you got your list. Now, let's go over some of the just-in-case reminders or the questions that we might add, ask ourselves. One of the first things we'll talk about is fire extinguishers. Do you have one? If you have a fire extinguisher, do you know where it is? And if you know where it is, are you the only person that knows where it is? Are you the only person that knows how to work it? Do you know how to work it? I have family members who have fire extinguishers. Now they're in the house or maybe in the garage, but they have them. They may be in the utility room behind the ironing board. Maybe they've fallen over behind the dryer covered in linen dust bunnies, but they have them. They probably haven't seen them in five or six years. They don't know if they have an expiration date. And if they do have an expiration date, are they expired? Or are they rusty? Do they still work? But hey, they've got a fire extinguisher. To that end, go ahead, add it to your list. Now, your list might say, locate and inspect fire extinguisher. Or it might say, purchase new fire extinguisher. Either way, no worries, at least you got it covered. Now once you do get your fire extinguisher and you got it inspected and you know where it is, make sure that you're not the only one in the house that knows how to work it. And that's easily resolved. In this day and age of YouTube, there's all kind of videos that will show you how to do this. So, download the video and on movie night with the family, show it as a screener before the main event. Or, if you're really a high-tech family, go ahead copy the link and email that link out to all your family and ask them to watch it. And then you can check off fire extinguishers. So the next thing in our just in case what ifs and questions that we might ask ourselves is what if there's a local emergency? Let's say there's a gas leak in the neighborhood or maybe the neighbor's house is on fire and everybody has to evacuate. But you're not all together, everybody's not at the house, and you can't get in touch with everybody. Either someone's lost their cell phone or left it or I don't know, communications are down. Is there a predetermined meeting place where you guys might meet? Have you discussed a place or a number that you'll call in case, for whatever reason, you can't locate or get to each other? Now, that place might be as simple as the convenience store at the edge of the neighborhood. Or it might be somewhere else, some family member's house. At any rate, think about that. Make a list. Now, not only do you want to think of some place local, but you may want to think of some place further out, just in case the evacuation is a little broader, say the city or the county. Think of those places, write them down on a list, have a conversation with your family, and then you can check off meeting place. All right, what's next? In this day and age of technology, when we are so dependent on technology, what would happen if 
for any reason your cell phone battery died and you couldn't get to your contacts or the cell towers were down and you couldn't get to anyone on a cell phone. Do all the members of your family have a hard copy of contacts if they needed to? If they couldn't go into their cell phones and speed dial you or if they couldn't go in and look into their contacts how would they call each other? Do, does every member of your family have a hard copy or something written down with everybody's contact information? Be it the family members, a neighbor's information, or anything like that. If not, go ahead. Put that on the list. Check. So, we've added a few things to the list. This next section I like to call the honeydew section. Now, if the person who normally does your honeydews if they are away or not available, is there anyone else in the house who knows how to flip a breaker? Well, flip a baker? No, not a baker, a breaker. Turn off the water, turn off the gas in the house if necessary. Get the car out of the garage if the power is off. Admittedly, it took me a moment before it clicked that I was not being held hostage by my garage just because the power in the neighborhood was off and my husband wasn't at home. Okay, I digress. At any rate, add these to your list. All right, so now we've got our list. Now, if you already had all of this stuff on the list, great job on your preparedness. Either that, or you've done some living and you've already had to go through some of these things. If you have, okay, you've conquered it, you've met life's challenges, and now you've moved on and you're better for it. If not, here's hoping you never have to go through these things. But with this list and the end of this video, hopefully you feel a little more prepared and maybe a little safer. Or maybe this list has helped you think of some things that are more specific to your situation or your life. For instance, maybe you are a caregiver to an ailing parent. Or maybe you have a disabled person in your home and there are other things that you need to consider. Or maybe you and your family are in witness protection and you have a code word that everybody knows to meet up and evacuate at the same place and not talk to anyone. Or maybe I watch too much TV. At any rate, I hope this has been informative and helpful, and maybe I can help you with other projects in your life. Thanks!